Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be the start of my Best in Beauty 2016 series. And we are doing this the same way we did last year where I'm posting a video every single day until I cover all the categories of beauty. So I have five different categories this year. Last year I had like... I think it was like 13 or 15 or something like that. And this year I'm broadening the categories. I feel like 15 days of the same type of video is just way too much, especially for a year end like favorites video. Like I feel like if I did 15 different videos, it would be the end of January and then it just wouldn't be relevant anymore. So quick little confession, I was actually gonna do my best in beauty video in just one video. I wasn't gonna separate it. I wasn't gonna do the series. I wanted to do the series, but when I first sat down and started thinking of my favorite products of the year, I felt like I didn't have a whole lot and then when I actually like got everything out and saw it and then I made the video, it was a very long video and long story short, things just kept happening that it just made me feel like it just wasn't meant to be. Like I just wasn't meant to post one very long video. I do want to mention that all the intros will not be this long. I'm just introducing you to what I'm doing. So in last year's series, all the videos were under five minutes long. They were very, very brief. But since I broadened the categories this year, there are a couple of videos that are around the 10 minute range. Since I'm grouping all the face products and all the eye products together, they're going to be longer videos. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, since this is the initial introduction to the series, that if there are any videos I have of of like full length reviews or demos or any kind of video where I've talked about a product more in depth. I will link that in the description box of each of the videos. So today's video is going to be all about face products. Tomorrow will be about eyes and then lips and then hair and then skincare. So I think that's enough rambling for today. So without further ado, here are my best in beauty face products for 2016. The Nivea Post Shave Balm for Sensitive Skin. Oh, I'm so tired of talking about this. I'm tired of hearing about it, but it works and it works really really well for my skin i have used this as a primer all year round i feel like when i don't use it i can see a difference in my skin and how my makeup wears there is glycerin in this which is supposed to be the active ingredient that's in a lot of primers to make like makeup adhere to your skin better i do find that my makeup lasts all day with this i just i love how hydrating it is and you don't have to be super careful with how much you apply it does apply like a moisturizing lotion so you it doesn't feel silicone or anything moving on to foundation i feel like this was a year for going back to old favorites and like go-to foundations because I really didn't discover anything new that just blew my mind and I tried a lot of foundation this year. So all these foundations with the exception of one are foundations that I talked about in last year's Best in Beauty but the Maybelline Dream Liquid Airbrush Finish Foundation <sighs> this is such a gorgeous foundation. It looks so airbrushed and flawless on my skin. It stays on all day long. It gives me a medium to full buildable coverage. It feels lightweight. It looks really light on the skin. This is such an amazing product and I actually really do like the shade. This is in the shade 20 Classic Ivory and this works really well for me. The e.l.f. Acne Finding Foundation. Oh my god, this is literally my favorite foundation probably of all time. I will say the color selection sucks. This is in the shade Buff and I actually haven't used this in a while because I'm, I've been trying so many different foundations lately. So I'm not even sure if this would work anymore. It just stays on all day long. It's a full coverage foundation. It's like a velvety satin finish. And like This is what I go to when I'm tired of everything else. And then this foundation is one that every time I stop using it and go back to it, I always ask myself like, what were you thinking? Like, this is such a good foundation and I am so inconsistent and flaky with it. This is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid Foundation. It's a beautiful, I guess it's like a satin glowy finish, but it's definitely not too glowy. I do find that it stays on my skin all day long. I don't get oily or shiny throughout the day. It has a beautiful medium to buildable coverage and it just, it just looks extremely good on my skin. And then the last foundation I have is one that was new to me this year. But I haven't talked about this a whole lot lately because I cannot find a color that perfectly matches me. This is the Ulta Color Correcting Foundation and Primer Stick. Right now, I'm in the shade Creamy Natural, or that's the shade I have. I'm not in the shade. This one is just way too pink and light for me. You guys probably can't see that. Like, it is very rare when I put on a foundation for the first time and I am wowed by it. I have never found a foundation that glides on and blends the way this one does. It's so, so extremely buildable. You can build this up to a full coverage. It just looks airbrushed and seamless on your skin. Skin. The only thing I don't like about this, other than the color selection, is that it doesn't last the longest on my skin because this is a really pretty, like, 
satin glowy finish and I do get shiny throughout the day with this. It's so beautiful that I'm still willing to wear it. I just wish I could find a better shade. The Laura Geller Baked Body Frosting in Tahitian Glow was definitely a favorite of mine this year. It kind of has a little bit of a sheen to where it makes it look more realistic in my opinion because I don't find that matte bronzers are very realistic because when you have a tan and you've been out in the sun, your, your skin does have that natural glow from within and I feel like this definitely mimics that to a T. I actually got this on Glambot.com. I think I got it for like less than $20. Usually it's like $40 or $50, so it's pretty pricey. You do get a lot of product in this, though. I could never see myself using this up. And then this product right here has been very loved. This is the Real Color Stay Glowing Longwear Bronzer in the shade Malibu Glow. You can pick this up at Sally's. It's under $10. The packaging is super cheap. As you can see, it's already broken. It's a really nice warm tan shade. It blends out so seamlessly. It's very smooth. It's very pigmented and buttery. It stays on all day. And this definitely would not be a 2016 roundup up without the physician's formula butter bronzer and yes let's just talk about how good it smells everyone else does but it blends out so beautifully on the skin it's very very smooth it makes your skin look very airbrushed this is such a beautiful blendable formula it looks so good it stays on all day long on me and then blush was definitely disappointing this year for me but the one blush I used I feel like pretty much all year round I don't remember any other blushes this year but this one this is the Milani baked blush in the shade Dolce pink everyone talks about luminoso or Coralista Coraline, Coralista. <laughs> but this one is such a beautiful rosy pink shade with a gold iridescent shimmer. And then the highlighter. It was a good year for highlighter. The Hard Candy Tiki Bronzer is one of my all time favorite highlights. The packaging definitely does suck. It is such a beautiful kind of golden based champagne you can't see it it doesn't have shimmer or sparkle or anything like that in it it just gives you such a beautiful sheen this is another type of product that you can wear very subtly and just give you kind of like a really natural glow but if you keep applying it and building it up this can be super intense and then this highlighter is one that came into my collection more recently this is the real color stay glowing longwear highlighter you can also pick this up at sally's this is that same line as the bronzer i just talked about doesn't look like much in the packaging when you first see it in the store, but when you start using it, you can see how soft and pigmented and buttery this is. This is an amazing highlighter. This is such a beautiful golden champagne. I feel like that's all I have. I only have golden champagne highlights. This is one that's very intense. This is more on the metallic side. And this next product is one that I loved more in the middle of the year. And I don't really use it a whole lot anymore. And I don't really know why. It's not that I don't like it. I just... I don't even know why I don't use this anymore, but this is the Makeup Revolution Radiance Palette. I actually compared this to the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette, and this is better in my opinion. It just gives you such a beautiful, angelic, ethereal glow. This is more of a natural highlight type thing, but it's not shimmery. It's just a straight up sheen. You can pick this up at Ulta now, and it's only like, I think either $11 or $15, but it's totally worth it. The highlighter of all highlights. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. Oh my, 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 Precious Petals has been very loved this year. This is the best drugstore highlight of all time. If you like a super, super intense, bam, in your face highlight, this will give you that in a heartbeat. This is not one for a super subtle, natural highlight. This is very, very metallic-y, very intense. This is like a bronzy champagne shade, so I think that makes it a lot more wearable and workable for different skin tones. So setting powders were another pretty tricky thing this year for me. I do have three that were my favorite. I have this NYX HD finishing powder in the shade Banana, which I talked about last year. This is one of my favorite under eye setting powders. It does brighten. This is like a mix between a white powder and a yellow powder. It's not super yellow though, so if you're super fair, you will be able to pull this off and it will brighten your under eye area. Then recently, I fell in love with these two e.l.f. powders. These have become my favorite setting powders ever. So this one, I can't figure out what it's called. I thought it was a reboot of the big honking cube like the hd loose powder i believe okay so here's what the packaging looks like it just comes in a box you can find this at walmart or that's where i've seen it i don't even think i've seen it on the elf website one of these powders i'm talking about today i haven't seen on the elf website so i don't know where they're keeping it this is in the shade sheer this is just translucent um it does have a sifter where you can like turn it around and close off the little holes and it's just so finely milled like it just it feels like nothing when you rub it between your fingers i don't get a white cast from this with flash or in photos or anything it fills in your pores it blurs over your imperfections and just makes your skin look so soft and airbrushed and then i also fell in love with this elf powder this is the perfect finish hd powder in the shade clear 
This is just a trend. Oh, I just broke it. Yep, it's not gonna last much longer. So as you can see, I've already hit paint in this. I don't feel like there's a lot of product in here though because I feel like it's so finely milled that it just, it's very dusty and powdery, but it looks so good on the skin. Again, this just blurs your skin. It minimizes your pores. I do feel like the loose version actually does like fill in your pores better than the pressed version. Moving on to setting sprays. I've only used like two this year. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus setting spray was definitely my most used setting spray this year though. I absolutely love how it sets my makeup. I feel like it keeps it on a lot longer. It just makes my skin look really fresh and hydrated. And then the Maybelline Master Fix setting spray was one that I discovered more towards the end of the year. This is the exact same thing as the L'Oreal setting spray, but it's a little bit cheaper. Again, it prolongs the wear of your makeup, kind of meshes the liquids and powders together. It does what you want a setting spray to do. So that is it for my favorite face products of 2016. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not going to do the whole spiel like I do in every outro. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are enjoying this series. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Mwah.